what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today is a super exciting day when it comes to handheld gaming PCs because AMD just announced their Z1 series which is a new Zen 4 RDNA 3 APU designed specifically for handhelds so yeah this is something that a lot of us have been waiting on for a little while and of course you know AMD has worked with kind of third-party companies and created a custom APU specifically for handhelds ie the Steam Deck but with the new Z1 series this is going to allow companies like Ioneo, GPD, 1X, and even AOK Zoe to get one of these chips in their handhelds. And there's actually two different variants. So obviously this is going to be known as the Z1 series. CPU based on Zen 4, iGPU based on RDNA 3, and there are some major differences between the Z1 and the Z1 Extreme. Obviously, with Throne Extreme behind a name, you kind of expect it to be more powerful, and it definitely is. So uh, just taking a look at the official website, I'll leave a link in the description. High performance handheld PC gaming needs next gen processing power, obviously. Z1 Extreme, we've got the Z1 here, gives us all of the features. And, you know, scrolling down a little bit, we've got one of the upcoming handhelds that will be using the Z1 CPU. So this isn't leaked anymore. This is officially on AMD's website right now. As you can see with the base Ryzen Z1, we get six cores, 12 threads, four RDNA 3 compute units with that iGPU, 22 megabytes of cache, and their TDP is rated at 15 to 30 watts. I was actually expecting a few more compute units here with the base Z1, but you know, they kind of left all of that to the Z1 Extreme. And with this, we're gonna get eight Zen cores, 16 threads, 12 compute units with those RDNA 3 graphics, 24 megabytes of cache, and they're saying the extreme is rated for 15 to 30 watts. We do have a little more information over on the product page, but it's not giving us any kind of clocks or anything like that. And I really do think that this can kind of be customized per manufacturer. It supports AMD Link, Radeon Anti-Lag, Super Resolution, Free Sync, Radeon Boost, and Chill. And this is the case for the Z1 and the Z1 Extreme. They also released a few slides, just giving us a little more information. And at the bottom, we've got the base Z1. This will offer up to 2.8 teraflops of GPU performance, but the Extreme offers up to 8.6 teraflops. And you know, that's not gonna tell us exactly how this thing can game, but it's kind of a baseline we can work with to compare it to other devices on the market right now, like the Xbox Series X offering 12.2 teraflops, PS5 coming in at 10.2, the Z1 Extreme 8.6, Series S 4, Z1 2.8, and the PS4 coming in at 1.9. AMD also offered up some of their own benchmarks, and really, you gotta take this with a grain of salt, but what we have here is the Z1 versus the Z1 Extreme, 1080p, native resolution, low settings. For instance, very first one here, Red Dead 2, 25.3 on the Z1, but 47.9 on the Z1 Extreme, and they didn't tell us what kind of wattage or TDP that this was running at, and again, we don't know the exact clocks of the GPU or the CPU side of things when it comes to these two new chips. But we did get a few more benchmarks of these same games, but using Radeon Super Resolution. So all of these were upscaled from 720p to 1080p using RSR and low setting. Red Dead 2 coming in with an average of 41.8. Moving down a little bit, Grand Theft Auto 5, 97.5. And uh, at the very end here, Dota 2 at 101 FPS. I mean, you can go down the board here. They also offered up the same kind of results here, but using the extreme. So 1080p, low settings. And when they say 1080, it's just upscaled from 720p using RSR. Red Dead 2, 72.3. Borderlands 3, 66.1. And yeah, I mean, everything here is over 60. Really, when it comes down to it on a handheld to save that battery life, we want to kind of turn V-Sync on. I know a lot of the newer handhelds coming out will have a 120 hertz refresh rate display, but in order to save battery life, sticking at 60 is going to be the way to go. Looks like this chip is going to be able to handle a lot of our favorite games quite well. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm pretty sure they would have tested this at 30 watts and not 15, so this is kind of the max performance we're going to see out of the Z1 Extreme at 30 watts. Obviously, a lot of people, including myself, are really going to want that Z1 Extreme just to get the most performance we can, but the regular base model Z1 shouldn't be written off, because in all actuality, I mean, it's definitely going to be a cheaper chip from AMD, and we could see this come to some lower-cost handhelds and get some really great performance out of it. 
Either way, I'm really excited about both of these chips, and you know, I've been trying to find a little more information on the clocks and everything for the Z1 Extreme, but it really does look like something uh, very close to the 7940HS. Both of them are based on Zen 4. They've got 8 cores, 16 threads, and we've got 12 compute units with those RDNA 3 graphics. Now, of course, the Z1 Extreme isn't going to run at the kind of wattages, and I personally don't think it's going to run at the kind of clocks we're seeing with the 7940HS, but I think we can get a good idea of what kind of performance we're going to see out of the Z1 Extreme with the 7940HS, and I happen to have one. I've made a few videos recently using this chip, but we've been at higher TDPs, up there around 65 watts, to get the maximum out of it. But I wanted to do a little bit of testing at a lower TDP, so I've set it up at 28 watts. Now remember, in their benchmark, they used Grand Theft Auto 5, upscaled to 1080p using RSR. That's exactly how we have it set up right now, and with the Z1 Extreme in their benchmark, they averaged 111 FPS. I'd say they were running that at 30 watts, we're a little under that at 28, but we are right on par with those benchmarks that they showed with the Z1 Extreme. And if we just threw a little more wattage at it, we could get right there at 111. But overall, I mean, this is as close as we're gonna get. I mean, this is a 12 CU RDNA 3 iGPU. We've got eight Zen 4 cores here on the CPU side of things. And I didn't adjust the clocks on the GPU or the CPU. I just kind of wanted to let it do its thing right here at 28 watts. You got lucky, buddy. I figured I'd test one more that they had on their benchmark chart. We went with Borderlands 3, set up the same way. Low settings, RSR upscaled to 1080 here. They averaged 66 FPS, and we're right there. We're between 61 to 71 FPS. So we're working with a really close comparison to that Z1 Extreme with this 7940HS at 28 watts. And why not base that chip on something they already have access to or that's already in the works? Here's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, 28 watts, RSR upscaled to 1080, and we're getting an average of around 64 FPS. Now this chip will do much more at a higher wattage with this game. We can get those clocks way up there on the GPU. But stuck at 28 watts, those clocks are going to kind of do their own thing. And yeah, I mean, this is still very playable. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal. And with this, I didn't worry about RSR because I know how well this runs on APUs. We're at low settings, 1080p, getting an average of around 84 FPS. And again, this APU can go up in wattage and it does run this game great at high settings, 1080p at around 65 watts. Moving over to a racing game, we've got Dirt 5, and I am using RSR with this. We're at low settings, and we got an average of around 63 FPS. It's a bit all over the place. I mean, when there's a ton of cars on screen, it does get close to going under 60, but uh, you know, with some more tweaking here and there, we could get it to run better. But the way it's looking right now with everything we've tested at 28 watts, that new Z1 with those 12 CUs on that RDNA iGPU should make for a pretty potent little gaming machine. And finally, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. For some reason, I've got V-Sync off, but it's kind of locked right there at 60 with that RSR enabled. I think it might be because I'm in kind of borderless window RSR. I probably should have set it up as full screen, but it will run this game at 60 FPS. So Cyberpunk 2077 will be playable. And I really do think we're very, very close to what the Z1 Extreme is gonna offer. I think it's kind of based on the same die here. Again, we're not sure about those GPU and CPU clocks or the maximum clocks on both, but I do think this setup right here is very, very close to what the Z1 Extreme is going to offer. And I'm really excited to see what these handheld companies do with this chip and, you know, what kind of extra features they add on to their upcoming handhelds. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave a link to AMD's website so you can learn a little more. And I will be doing more testing with that 7940HS. If you're interested in seeing some more games running at lower wattages, just let me know in the comments below and I can create a video. We can go down to 15 watts, up to 30 watts, just to see what we can do with it. And like I mentioned, I really do think this is as close as we're going to get right now to the Z1 Extreme without really getting one in our hands. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, are you excited that AMD has come out with this chip specifically designed for handhelds? I know a lot of people out there are gonna be. What do you want to see from manufacturers building new handhelds with this chip? Let us know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.